Okay. Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to today's Meet the Dean event. I hope your first week of the fall semester is going well. My name is Kathy Swidwa. I'm the staff advisor for the Liberal Arts Undergraduate Council, which is the student government in the College of the Liberal Arts. The organization plans events like this one for current students throughout the year and acts as the voice of the Liberal Arts student body. But the Liberal Arts Count Undergraduate Council is not the only Liberal Arts student organization. There are actually 40 student organizations in the College of the Liberal Arts. So if you're interested in getting more involved in the college, I encourage you to join one or more of our student organizations. They're a great way to meet people with similar majors and interests. You can learn more about our student orgs by visiting la.psu.edu slash student orgs. And that website URL will be displayed on the screen at the end of today's event. I'd now like to turn things over to Associate Dean Page. He is the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Studies and Associate Professor of German and Linguistics in the College of the Liberal Arts. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you everyone for being here this afternoon. I hope your classes are off to a good start. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Clarence Lane, who joined Penn State as Professor of African American Studies and Susan Welsh Dean of the College of the Liberal Arts last July. Dean Lang joined us from the University of Kansas where he was a Dean's Professor in African American Studies and American Studies and Interim Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. He served in various leadership roles during his tenure at Kansas and received numerous accolades as well, including being named a Men of Merit Honoree by the Emily T Taylor Center for Women and Gender and an Organization of American Historians Distinguished Lecturer. He also received the Outstanding Faculty Service Award from the Department of African and African American Studies in 2013 and the McNair Scholars Mentoring Award in 2015. Dean Lang is a noteworthy scholar in African American urban history and social movements, particularly in the Midwest and Border South. He received his bachelor's degree in journalism with a minor in Black Studies from the University of Missouri. His master's degree in history from Southern Illinois University, and his PhD in history from the University of Illinois. We're delighted he is now part of the Penn State family, and we're especially delighted that he could be here this afternoon. Dean Lang, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Dean Page. I had to check and make sure I wasn't muted. I'm doing a lot of that these days. So uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Welcome, glad that you're here. Uh, I hope that your first few days of classes have gone well so far. So I'll echo the comments along those lines. And I hope that you're starting to settle into some sort of routine. Um, I, I really appreciate the opportunity for us to get together to get today, even if we need to do so uh, remotely. You'll see I'm in my office on campus. So I'm, I'm seeing uh, some of what's going on and, and really happy to see um, so many of you um, at least all of you who passed my window uh, uh, wearing your, your mask. So kudos to you. Um, I've actually had this day circled on my calendar for a while. Uh, last year's Meet the Dean event really was one of my first chances to interact with students in the college. And I enjoyed taking questions. I enjoyed hearing what was on people's mind. Um, so I want to leave as much uh, time as possible at the end uh, as well today to take your questions or even hear your remarks. You may not have questions, you just might have things that you wanna comment about. Uh, but before that, I, I thought I would take a, a few minutes to talk a bit about my first year, how that's been, uh, my time at Penn State and in the College of the Liberal Arts, and how that's helped to shape uh, and reinforce my vision. So let me start by stating the obvious. Um, like you, there's no way I could have ever predicted my first year going the way that it has, particularly uh, when we got to February and then March and May and up until now. But you know, then again, my point is that uh, none of us could have ever envisioned a year quite like this. Uh, and I want to also say as well, you know, and believe me when I say this, I share the same concerns as you do about everything that's going on right now. If we think about the situation that we're in, uh, a global pandemic, um, systemic racism that has prompted levels of civil unrest that we haven't seen in a long time, uh, political turmoil and questions about the long-term health of our democracy even, and certainly uh, with a 
a hurricane currently raging in the Gulf Coast and wildfires raging in California, and there are locusts too. Um, these reminders that the environmental health of our world um, you know, is at risk as, 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 as well. This is a really challenging moment. This can be scary stuff, uh, and it's okay to acknowledge that. Uh, as Dean, it's, it certainly shouldn't surprise you that wondering what impact all of these events has had or might have on our students, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, these are things that, uh, that, that I think a lot about and, and occasionally have kept me up at night because I take the, the duties in my role very seriously. I know I've said this before. Um, I, I think it bears repeating uh, whenever I can. As, as your dean, uh, your health, your well being, your academic success and progression, uh, the well being of our liberal arts community, these things matter to me uh, more than you can ever know. And so uh, we are going to continue to do our absolute best uh, to try and, and create the environment that you want and deserve. Um, those of you who are returning students this fall, I, I doubt you ever thought you would leave for spring break last March and then not return to campus for the rest of the, the, the semester. I suspect that those of you who are first year students, you thought maybe you were heading off to college, um, that that would feel much different than it does so far. And I realize that the fall semester that we are about to experience, while memorable, because you all will have a unique experience. I can guarantee you that. It will be memorable. Uh, this fall is not going to be uh, everything that, that we all would have, would have expected. Um, and I, I'm sure you're dealing with that now. I get that. It's frustrating to me as well. I miss being able to be with you in person. Uh, I miss spending time with students. I miss the energy and enthusiasm of faculty and staff as well. Everyone coming back physically to campus in the fall. As frustrating as all this is though, uh, we're doing the things that we need to do so that the situation can go back to normal, and I put that in quotes, whatever normal may be, as soon as possible. And so for that to happen, um, we all need to do our part. So first and foremost, wear a mask. And I'm not wearing mine because I'm in my office, but, but trust that I do wear my mask when I'm not in this space. So wear your mask, please, first and foremost. Practice physical distancing. Wash your hands frequently and thoroughly. Uh, we need you to be, you know, don't gather in large groups of, of, of people. Um, I know that's gonna be difficult because university as much as anything is social, um, but we really need you all to take your safety and the safety of others seriously. Stay home if you don't feel well. And especially if you are having symptoms that are typically associated with COVID-19. These are simple steps. Uh, that, that we're hoping, that we are confident will allow us to put this virus behind us sooner rather than later. Um, let me say this as well. Um, I, I want to be crystal clear. These expect expectations don't just fall on you. Um, I, I, I want to be very, very uh, intentional about making sure that we don't frame our students as being a threat um, to the university or to the broader community. And certainly it's not fair to ask students to act responsibly and then have faculty and staff not do the same, right? So I've been made aware of a few incidents um, in terms of some uh, of, of faculty not conducting themselves and perhaps uh, all the times in the ways that we expect them to um, and they should be. And I want you to know that, that, that this is unacceptable behavior. And as these circumstances come to my attention, uh, my team and I, we've been endeavoring to address them accordingly and directly. I also think it's important for you to know that despite my frustration, despite the uncertainty that we face, I see great reason for optimism and hope. I, I am an optimist by, by temperament. And this is where some of my priorities for the College of the Liberal Arts come into play. Um, as I watch what's unfolding in the world around us, I would say the role that liberal arts play in helping us resolve these issues has never been more relevant. If we think about the ability to reflect upon and learn from our past, the ability to consider and demonstrate empathy for diverse viewpoints, the ability to think critically, to communicate effectively, and act creatively and boldly. These are fundamental liberal arts traits that we need to move forward as individuals and as a society, certainly as a university community. And there are core skills, I wanna add, that any employer in any profession 
seeks in its employees. So this is not about making you better people, better citizens, if you will, but also we take seriously career readiness um, and, and how it contributes to that. And you'll be hearing some of, uh, about that today. Um, uh, this idea of, of providing a transformative liberal arts educational experience, this continues to be my top priority for you. Some of the ways that we deliver that experience may need to be altered in the short term, but in the long term, our priority will always be to provide Penn State liberal arts students with the edu education they need to prepare them for whatever career path they choose. Um, even if your path, I'll, I'll say you now, that path changes directions at some point in the future, or even if that path points you towards careers uh, that may not even exist yet. Um, and I think you should make sure that, that you are taking the opportunity to not just think about perhaps what your parents want you to do, but, but, but take this as an opportunity to, to think about the kinds of futures you imagine for your, yourselves. You all in many ways are gonna be creating jobs for yourselves that don't even exist yet. And part of what we do as a college of the liberal arts is create individuals who can do that. If you take nothing else away from our time together today, please remember this. Uh, our college, your college is here for you. If you are willing to put in the time and the effort effort, we are willing to do everything we can to help you succeed. And I want us to you know, perhaps to talk a little bit about how we make sure that we keep you engaged, even if many of your uh, classroom experiences may be occurring virtually. Uh, we want to think about how um, that being the case, how we, we make sure that you're having opportunities to connect. Um, and happy to, to hear your thoughts and, and certainly questions about that. So in closing, uh, let me just highlight a few resources that you might find especially helpful right now as you end your first week of classes here at Penn State this fall. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to download the Penn State Go app on your phone or tablet. Do this please as soon as possible. In addition to giving you one-stop access to LionPath, to Canvas, Starfish, LionCache, other important information, the app is also where students enrolled uh, in in-person courses can go to complete their required daily student COVID-19 symptom checker. So we want you all to continue to do that. We also encourage you to bookmark the college's COVID website. And this is at COVID updates, all one word, dot la, dot psu, dot edu, and frequent the students and additional resources pages in particular for key reminders and access to a host of academic, financial, housing, IT, career enrichment, student engagement, and health and wellness information. So add that to your, your bookmarks. Uh, if you find yourself in, in need of emergency financial assistance as a result of this pandemic, the college and university might be able to provide support. So please email studentcare at psu.edu, that's all one word, to inquire about possible university assistance or um, LA Emergency, Liberal Arts Emergency, LA Emergency Fund, all one word, at psu.edu about possible college assistance. Uh, we've created a fund recently um, this past spring to, uh, sub to, to, uh, to supplement what the university is doing. Last but certainly not least, please remember that counseling and psychological services is available to help if you find yourselves facing any emo emotional duress. Uh, I wanna thank you again for allowing me to speak with you today. Uh, I wanna thank uh, the Liberal Arts Undergraduate Council for hosting this event and for everything else the group does to support students in the college. I hope that those of you who are not connected uh, to this organization will find your way there. Uh, um, and at this point, I'm going to turn things over to Jenna Spinelli, the communications coordinator for the college's McCourtney Institute for Democracy. And she is going to moderate our question and answer session this afternoon. Looking forward uh, to hearing and doing my best to respond to your questions. Thank you. Great. Uh, well, thank you, Dean Lang, and I'm um, excited to get started with the, the question and answer here in just a couple of minutes. If you do have uh, questions, you can go ahead and type them into the Q&A box. We will try to get to as many of them as we can with the time we have remaining. And thank you to those of you who did also submit questions in advance. We will be uh, getting those in as well. 
But um, before we uh, dive into that, I wanted to just have two other uh, folks from the college who are with us today just introduce themselves briefly. Uh, and I actually have a question for, for each of you as, as well that we can use to kick off the Q&A. So um, first up, we'll go to uh, Greg Nolan from the college's academic advising office. Greg, if you could just tell us a little bit about um, what your office does and then uh, to answer a question that came in uh, in advance, what do students need to do to declare their majors? Yeah, thanks, Jenna. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm Greg Nolan. I'm the Director of Academic Advising here in the College of the Liberal Arts. So myself, along with our entire advising team, we're here to assist you um, through your questions you have, whether it's scheduling courses, your academic progress, or other things that Dean Lang talked about that you may remember that you heard something about, but don't remember exactly where to go. We can be a really good first step um, and a resource to help you out to find those answers. Um, to answer your question, Jenna, to declare your major, students will use Lion Path. And for most of the majors in the college, um, we don't have any entrance to major requirements. So it's once you have 30 credits and as long as your cumulative GPA is above 2.0, you can go ahead and declare your major in Lion Path. And if you have questions on how to do that, you can obviously reach out to your academic advisor we do have a few majors within the college that have some additional requirements. Um, and there are Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science majors in economics and psychology, our Bachelor of Science major in political science, and our social data analytics major. So they do have some additional steps that you need to do before you declare your major in either of those fields. But if you're interested in those, you can obviously reach out to your academic advisor to learn more about those specific requirements. Great. Uh, thank you, Greg, for that. And uh, we will turn now to Susan Nell from the college's Career Enrichment Network. Susan, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about what your office does, the services you provide. And then the, the question um, we received was, um, what should students do if they're interested in studying abroad? What steps can they start taking now? Sure. So my name is Susan. I work in the Liberal Arts Career Enrichment Network, as Jenna said. So our office is really here to support all liberal arts students with engaging in as many enrichment type activities as possible during your Penn State career to help you to decide how you would like to use your liberal arts degree and your liberal arts skills post Penn State. So what does that mean exactly? So it incorporates everything from career development. So if you're thinking about wanting to do an internship or having some type of career related experience during your time at Penn State, we're happy to help with that everything from helping you with your resume to connecting you with potential employers and really helping you to explore what the possibilities might be. Um, the good news about liberal arts degrees is that you do have a lot of opportunities, but I sometimes joke with students that that can be the bad news as well because you have a lot of options. And so you have to start maybe narrowing them down a little bit. Our office also works with liberal arts students interested in gaining global experience. So if you're thinking about study abroad or an international internship, um, we're happy to connect you with an alumni mentor. So if you're kind of curious to know what does someone who was a philosophy major, for example, what did they do post-graduation? I'd like to have a mentor to help get a little bit of perspective. Um, we work with the alumni mentor program for that. Um, so really kind of a soup to nuts, helping you to think about how to engage with a variety of different activities during your four or five years here and make sure that as you're exiting Penn State, you have a pretty good idea of where you would like to go and that you're pretty well prepared for that next step. So to answer the question about what to do if you're interested in studying abroad, uh, a couple of things. So the first thing that you could do is definitely make sure to mention that to your academic advisor the next time you meet with him or her because they can help you to think about any academic requirements that might in any way restrict the semesters or give you some ideas about the best semesters or the best time to study abroad. So that's a really good thing to be talking about with your advisor and just kind of getting a sense of that. The next thing you can do is visit the Education Abroad website, which is global.psu.edu. There's a section of that site that is specifically for education abroad, and you can start looking through all the hundreds of programs that Penn State offers. The, the programs can be a little daunting at first, um, so you do have some filter options. You can, if you know what semester or what part of the world you would like to study in, you can filter down and um, kind of narrow those down a bit as well. And we're happy to help with that, so you can always book an appointment with a coach in our office, and we can walk you through that process. Um, and the last thing I'll mention is just something that you can note on your calendar. Education Abroad has a fair every fall, and so this fall, I found out this morning, it will be on October 14th. So uh, please keep an eye out on your email. One of the best pieces of advice I can give to you as a student in the college is pay attention to that weekly newswire that comes out. 
Uh, not everything in every newswire will maybe be of interest to you, but make sure you're scanning that. And we'll be sure to put a lot of information in there the weeks leading up to the Ed Abroad Fair so that you can attend that fair, get a better sense of some of the different programs, maybe talk to participants who've already studied on those programs and have any questions you might have answered. Great. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, so diving into some of the, the questions that have come in, um, Dean Lang, I'm going to start with something that, that you touched on in your, your opening remarks, but um, came up in, in the questions as well. You know, what are some ways or, or what is the, the college and to the extent that you know what's the, the university more broadly doing to help students connect with others in the, the virtual world that we find ourselves in this semester? Good question. So, uh, you know, we're, act, we're having conversations about that just right now within our college. I really want to emphasize the point that Susan made a moment ago. Follow that weekly newswire. Um, there are a lot of activities that are occurring. We have our liberal arts undergraduate council. Uh, I would love to see students in our college get involved with that. We have a number of other uh, student organizations that orbit around the college. Um, you know, finding ways to be actively involved, even if virtually, I think becomes really important right now. It's going to feel different, uh, but, but I think we need to, to make the best use of the technology that we have to keep people from feeling isolated, right? That you're not just, just kind of in a silo taking classes in these different kinds of ways, but to feel part of a community. So the fact that people are here, that's really a good sign itself. Uh, you know, keep your eyes and ears open, watch your email. Um, I know a lot, of, a lot of transactions don't occur on email, but keep your eye open uh, for, for those, um, for, for opportunities to, to, to be involved. Um, we have a few other things that are coming down the pike as well. Um, I, I wanna be careful about getting too far ahead of things that have, that have happened, but we're also interested in um, peer mentoring and tutoring. Um, that would be an opportunity for some students who uh, would, would get some support for doing that. Uh, uh, ideally students who are in their sophomore, junior and senior year. But then for first year students, it would be a way of connecting them to another student, connecting them to the college, connecting them to the university. Um, so there are a lot, there's a lot of conversation occurring or, or, uh, you know, right now. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with activities in the hub. That, you know, so there are activities that are coming out of student services more broadly. Um, and so I, I do think it becomes really important to, um, there, there are endless opportunities. You just need to make sure that you are tracking them. And as a college, we're gonna do our best to keep those opportunities in front of you as well. Great. Um, and, and kind of a, a similar question about our, our current environment. Um, you know, no one wants to think about being sent home before Thanksgiving break, but you know, who knows what's, what's, what the next couple of weeks and months may bring. So um, how might the, the academic environment change um, if for some reason you know, campus would need to, to close or students would need to go home you know, earlier than, than planned? Uh, Dean Lang, maybe uh, Dean Page, if you wanna to, to jump in there as well. I'm happy to start with that. And, 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 and you know, let's, let's think about it this way, that a university this size, there's no light switch that gets flipped um, and everyone goes home. So, you know, think about this as a highway with a number of off ramps. And so, you know, it becomes, uh, you know, again, not putting bad things into the universe, but there are options whereby there may be a campus that would be closed. Um, there may be a certain space, a residence hall, um, or a Greek letter organization house. I'm not wishing this, right? That would have to be shut down or what have you. So there are a lot of things that could occur before we got to the situation where we had to pack everything in. And so, I, you know, I don't want to, people to think that somehow something occurs and then that's, that's it. Um, that's not likely to occur. Um, but uh, we have to take this seriously, in my view, right? And I don't think I'm, I'm alone in that. And so if we see things trending um, in, in a particular direction that, 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 that is a, a challenge to the health and safety of the Penn State community and surrounding, then you can trust that, that President Barron and Provost Jones will make the necessary decisions. 
And if that happened, what likely would occur, and I have to be careful that I don't talk too much above my pay grade here, because some of these are not decisions for me to make, but what would likely occur was that there would be a, um, what you might call a ramp down. So the likelihood of, okay, it's done, pack everything up, you have to be gone by Wednesday and it's Monday. That's not a likely scenario, even in the worst case scenario, but that there would be, um, we would be a bit more deliberate than we were as a university when we had to go remote in the spring, where it really was about moving things quickly, expediting, that's not likely to occur in this situation. And I hope that this will all just be speculative and that we don't have to go in this direction. So I'm really encouraged that people are wearing their masks, continue to do those things. Um, if you get contacted, this came up in a meeting that I was in today. If you get contacted students um, for um, uh, uh, surveillance testing, please respond to that, please go, because there will be some random testing going. This is different from your pre-arrival testing, um, but this is while you're here and they'll just do a sampling to just to see how things are trending. We really need your compliance, um, your participation with that. Um, and it's not, about, um, it's, it's not about assuming that anyone has done anything. It's about just making sure we're keeping tabs on where things are with this very deadly pandemic. I don't know if Dean Page, uh, well, Dean Page is, is actually has a very particular role in this. I'll leave it to him to, to, uh, to, to identify that. Well, uh, Dean Lang really covered the base as well. The only thing I would add is all of your in-person and mixed mode or hybrid classes would, if we had a scenario where we did have to um, switch to remote, they can switch to remote. So you, you would be able to complete all your courses, even in a worst case scenario. So, um, so be confident that we can co continue to deliver um, your academic courses for you. Can I add to this? Because Dean Page isn't going to say it, so I'm going to say it. <laughs> but he's actually serving on the university has, um, you know, just sort of, you know, just making sure that, that, that we're tracking and tracing and making sure that we're thinking several steps ahead so that we're not reacting to situations but that we're thinking about it. And so I'm really happy that he's playing a part um, in that particular group. So he's monitoring things from his own perch for us as well. So thank you for your service. Did you have a choice? I don't remember. Um, I don't know if I really had a choice. <laughs> and and just, just so you guys know, this is just contingency planning. So it's just a responsible thing to do. Like what, what, we, what do we do in certain scenarios? Sure. Wonderful. Thank you both. Uh, so Dean Lang, we, we had a couple of questions come in related to your time as Dean thus far. Um, what is your favorite part about being Dean? And um, what, what improvements are you looking to make this year that you maybe didn't get to or are just looking to, to change for this year looking forward? So, so I would say my, my favorite part of being Dean, wow, that's a good one. Um, um, I, I, uh, it's gonna sound simple, but I, I say it. Um, anyway, one of the things that I miss um, being in this office is just seeing the sea of students between classes or what have you coming, coming by. That I really enjoyed, having opportunities to spend with students um, around the activities that they're, that they're engaged in, hearing what, what their plans are, what they're trying to accomplish. I don't teach anymore in this role. So that's the closest that I get to spending time with students. And so that I've enjoyed a great deal. And, and I'm, I'm really, it, 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 it hurts me that we're not in a situation where, where that can, can occur. So that's, that's, that's one thing. The other part of that question is, uh, uh, what, what are your priorities moving forward or, or yeah. things you're looking to improve upon? Yeah. So as, as it relates to, to our undergraduates, again, I'm a real fan of, um, of career readiness. And again, what we mean by that is making sure that as our students, as you, I'll speak to you as students, your journey here is not just academics, that's the bedrock of it, but that you're having opportunities um, to do research with faculty members. Um, you're having opportunities when it's safe to do so again, study abroad opportunities, um, having opportunities uh, for internships of various types um, so that, that, that you all are not only um, building an academic portfolio, but you're building a portfolio of experience um, that will make you not only fully rounded human beings, but also attractive um, for whatever trajectory you might go in, whether that's graduate or professional school, whether that's right in, in, um, into the workforce. So I'm, I'm interested though, of course, um, probably not moving fast enough, really interested in, in how we 
um, buttress the, the, the capability of our career enrichment network to sustain, um, to sustain that work, despite a number of difficulties that, that we're having um, right now. And in fact, that was one of the things that made this particular job attractive to me, was that this college, you see this in business schools, you don't always see this in liberal arts um, outfits, where there's a, there's, a, there's a structure that's set up to assist students um, with, with thinking about um, their, uh, uh, their experiences beyond the classroom. Yeah, kind of developing that that entrepreneurial mindset. I know you 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 mentioned that in your opening remarks. That's something that that is is high on on your priority list. Um, can can you talk a little bit more? Maybe others can weigh in on this as well about how a student might do that. What resources what resources uh, does the college and does does the university offer to help students develop those entrepreneurial skills? Well, that, that seems like a tailor-made question for, for Susan um, and or Richard, if they want to, uh, yeah, to weigh in on that. Sure, I'm happy to throw out a couple of ideas. I mean, in addition to sort of the usual looking for internships with startups, or if you have an idea of starting up your own organization, I think the university has done a really nice job over the last few years with um, providing a really wide range of resources for students, including things like the Happy Valley Launchbox, which gives a lot of resources and advisors and support to students who really want to do those kind of entrepreneurial ventures. In addition, there are some academic um, structures that can help you with that. So there's an entrepreneurship and Greg or, or Dean Page, correct me if I'm wrong, is an entrepreneurship and innovation minor, I think is something along those lines. So if you're looking for more of an academic basis. I think that's right, yeah. For, um, for pursuing entrepreneurial ventures, then you can seek that out and talk with your academic advisor about different ways to get those experiences. The other minor that I would put a plug in for if you're interested in business at all is the business and the liberal arts minor because that gives you just sort of a nice um, foundation of a bunch of different areas of business and I think is a really nice complement to really any academic major. So I don't know if there are other things you'd like to add. No, I think that pretty much covers it. I would just, the only thing I would add is that, um, you know, if you're a liberal arts major, there are just so many number of things that you can do. And, and what you'll find with many liberal arts majors, and this is true actually for non-liberal arts majors as well, is most people have several different careers. You know, I think the days are gone when people generally just start one career at age 22 and they're doing that same job or in that same profession at age, you know, whenever they retire. So, um, and I think one thing that a liberal arts education gives you are, is communication skills, critical thinking skills, the ability to make connections and to kind of see the big picture and you know, have, um, and I think that's, and also have a global perspective, um, which is incredibly important today. You need to be a flexible thinker um, and you need to be able to express yourself well and understand others well. Can, can I add to that? I really want to double down on what Dean Page said. I mean, you know, certainly what what's, I'm really interested as well, and these things are, are I think they, they inter, interweave, uh, you know, that, that we make sure we're creating a working as well as a learning environment where everyone can flourish and, and be their, their best selves. And, and whether we call that um, equity and inclusion, whether we call that diversity, whether we call that plain old fashioned, um, you know, creating just communities, um, these are things that make people not just better human beings, better people, but also able to be adaptable and do many of the things that, that Dean Page was speaking about being able to take perspective uh, from others who are unlike themselves, whether we're talking about gender, race, sexuality, nationality, religion, um, socioeconomic background, uh, what have you. Certainly we're in an environment where we have to take those things. They've always been in season, um, but we have to take them, I think, seriously and in ways, uh, particularly now. Indeed. Can I just add one more thing to that that I should have mentioned? Um, one of the great advantages to coming to a school like Penn State, of course, is our alumni network. And if you, uh, as a student, access your Nittany Lion Careers account, which is just nittanylioncareers.psu.edu, you'll see upcoming events. And one of our speakers this fall is one of our alumni who um, I believe his undergraduate degree was in history, but he now works in tech in Silicon Valley and is happy to share 
his experience and advice of students who are interested in being more entrepreneurial and thinking about how to transition their liberal arts skills into more of that tech business environment. So keep an eye on those events and think about ways to connect with alumni who have already paved that way for you and can give you some good advice. Is this Jay Yanamini, Susan? Am I, or no, okay. It's uh, Tim Yoon. His name is Tim oh, Yoon. Oh, okay, all right. Um, great, uh, Susan, uh, while you have the, the, the floor, so to speak, a couple of other questions for you. Um, how do students know what internships they're eligible for? Um, and then there's also a question about um, work study and uh, how, how someone may or may not be eligible for that. So for internships that you're eligible for, the best place to start is Nittany Lion Careers. And you may or may not realize it, but you already have an account in that system. And you can log in with your Penn State email credentials. You'll be able to complete a profile, but as part of that system, you can book appointments with any of the career coaches in our office, but you can also see a wide array of internship and job opportunities that are available. And that is a university wide system. So you'll see a really wide range of opportunities and you can filter and look at things by major or by your particular interests. Again, we're always happy to walk students through that and help you to learn how to use it most efficiently. Um, I think it's a really great resource and that's the place that I would typically suggest students start to get a better sense of sort of what's out there and each position will have information about whether they're looking for a certain class level or a GPA requirement, things like that. It may not be the best system for every type of position in every industry, so please connect with someone in our office if you're in there and you're not seeing things that quite match what you're looking for and we can help you to find other resources to, um, to connect with. Uh, as far as work study, I have to confess I'm not as familiar with that. I believe that might be managed through the Office of Student Aid or Financial Aid. So, right. I, yeah, is that right? Yes. So I'm, I might suggest contacting them or looking at their website for a little bit more information about the work study side of that. Okay. And to, to go back to the internships, it's, it's never too early to start that internship search process, right? It is not. You may find that some employers are very specific about what class level, maybe for example, they're recruiting juniors for the summer after their junior year. With that said, it's never too early to start because you can start becoming familiar with the types of opportunities available and what you need to do to make yourself a competitive candidate. And there are also a number of employers that will consider students who are younger. So first year or second year students. I think this is going to be, I mean, this is an interesting semester for all of us in so many ways, right? But I think this will be particularly interesting because organizations that are still able to offer internships during the fall and spring that may traditionally have required you to relocate for the fall and spring, which may not have been as appealing. I've noticed a number of them are now offering virtual internships. And so depending on whether or not you can make that work with your class schedule, I think this situation we're in is going to open up some opportunities for students that they might not otherwise have been able to consider. Great. A um, couple of questions have come in related to student organizations. Um, I know one specifically um, on what, it, what are the uh, requirements to become a liberal arts ambassador. Kathy, I don't know if you wanted to, to speak to that one. And then also, you, know, um, you mentioned at the, the very beginning that there are 40 liberal arts student organizations. I, I don't want you to rattle off all 40 necessarily, but if you can maybe just give kind of a, a high level overview of, of some of the, the different types of organizations that the college has. Yeah, great question. So the liberal arts ambassadors, those uh, students serve as representatives to our prospective students and alumni. So they plan different events and connect with prospective students who are interested in joining uh, the College of the Liberal Arts. So if you're interested in becoming an ambassador, uh, you just have to be a student in the College of the Liberal Arts and you fill out an application. So those applications will actually open next week, but you can reach out to Casey Sennett. She's the, the president of that organization and her email address is on that student orgs website that I mentioned earlier that will we'll show the URL um, at the end of this event. Um, so on that page, yeah, we have a list of all the different student organizations. We link to their websites. We have email addresses and then also their social media, so you can feel free to, to check them out. But it's really an array of different organizations. So some organizations are 
for specific majors. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be in that major to join, but there's a Women in Economics Society, there's a Justice Association, um, different language clubs, um, all sorts of different things. So definitely check that out. Um, and if you see an organization on there that may not have been part of the, the university's big virtual org fair that they're doing this week, you can still reach out to these organizations. They may not have been part of that event, but you're welcome to check out their website to see what they're going to be doing this semester. But you can also just email the email address on, on the page and connect with them. Great. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I want to maybe do kind of a, a round robin here. So we, we had several students ask, um, what is, is one piece of advice you would give to first year students? So we can maybe just kind of go through uh, everyone's maybe to, to reiterate something you've already talked about or something you haven't gotten a chance to, to talk about yet. So uh, Dean Lang, we'll, we'll start with you if you don't mind. That's fine. These are some some good questions, right? I mean, they're just it gets a fundamental, you know, who are we? Um, uh, so I would I would say two things. I would say that this is really a good moment. Um, I'm going to play the nerd a bit. You know, read widely and deeply. Um, you know, find your way to conversations with others, whether you suspect they agree with you or not. Um, in terms of, of engaging those ideas. And I would say, and this is not one thing, but it's one A, you know, B and C. And, uh, you know, the, the last part of that would be um, be, be understanding of yourself and, and, and others. Um, I think this is a, a difficult moment that we're in. I think people have different ways of, of coping with that. Um, you know, be mindful of yourself and your well being how you are. And if you feel like you need help, that's nothing to be ashamed about. We need you to reach out. You need to let us know um, so that we can make sure that, that you're getting the support that you need. But also at the same time, be understanding that other people, I think, are having a difficult time. And it's not just about what's on campus. It may be things that are happening in their families, in their communities, at home. People may have lost jobs. Um, I'm sure that some of you know someone who is, um, has had COVID. Um, I hope no one who's died from it. I have a relative who died from it. Um, and we're moving at a, cer a, cer a certain clip that we don't always assess where we are. So you need to do that for yourself and you need to be understanding of others. That doesn't mean that you let people harm you or abuse you. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that, 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 that people are, I, I think are, this is, a, this is a, a tough moment. And may I also add on the end of all of that, there are opportunities to have fun. So do find ways to get involved as well. All right. Great. Uh, thank you, Dean Lang. Um, Dean Page, we'll, we'll go to you next. Okay, so, so I'm going to in some way echo Clarence. The first thing I would say is what my mother always tells me, and my mother continues to tell me this when, I, it, when I'm 59 years old, and that is get enough sleep and eat well. So, um, and I think that really is crucial for your mental health. Now, the, the, the sort of thing I also realize is that for a lot of students, food security is a real issue. So if, if you have, if that's true for you, there are resources that we have at Penn State, like the, um, I think it's called Lion Food Pantry. So if, if you have um, those kinds of issues, you can contact the Office of Student Care and Advocacy and they can help you. And I think um, one of you earlier gave the, the, the email address for that. I, but anyway, um, you can always reach out to your advisor too and they can point you to, to those resources. The second thing I would say is get involved. And I would, and Clarence, uh, Dean Lang just used that same term. And I, and I think of that, to me, in my mind, that's something that's very broad. So that means get involved in your courses, show up, do the reading, think about it, talk about your courses. It also means get involved with student life and co-curricular activities. So join a club. Um, I know for myself, when I was a student and for my kids when they were students, in college, um, they learned and got so much out of student organizations that they belong to. Um, and you'll find that your courses are much more interesting and that you will get a lot more out of them um, if you show up, do the reading, and just really immerse yourself into it. There's just some fascinating, um, I mean, you're here because you're intellectually curious. So don't 
So you know, grab onto that and pursue that, pursue those interests that you have. Wonderful, thank you, Dean Page. Um, Greg, what about you? Yeah, thanks, Jenna. Um, so I would echo some of um, what they both have said already. And what I already tell students is don't be too stubborn to ask for help, right? That's why we're here, especially in academic advising. So reach out to us if you ever just stumble across a concern or a challenge that you don't know how to address yourself. That's really what we're here for. Um, but beyond that, it's really just being open to new opportunities, challenging yourself and stepping outside your comfort zone, right? So there's so much here on campus, both within the college and outside of the college. Um, but find an office that seems interesting to you, that piques your interest that you haven't set foot in. Um, check out the PRCC in the hub, the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity. There's a ton of really cool offices and centers across campus that can really um, challenge you to think in new ways and maybe open up new opportunities to get involved with other areas you wouldn't have thought of. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Susan, what about you? So I would reiterate something I uh, re referenced earlier, and that is read your email. <laughs> I know you get a lot, we all do, uh, but finding a way to sort of manage that, and that's where you're gonna learn about a lot of the opportunities that Greg just mentioned. There, there is so much that sometimes it might be a little bit like drinking from a fire hose, and so you have to find a way to sort of manage that, right? Um, so the basic one would be read your email, but above all of that, I would um, echo what you've already heard, you know, get involved, and that looks like, that looks different for different people. For you, it might be a student org. For someone else, it might be research. For someone else, it might be volunteering in you know, some kind of an organization. So think about what you're interested in. And just because you try something, if you don't like it, that doesn't mean you have to stick with it. You, know, you have a lot of chances to, to sort of reinvent yourself here in college. And that's what this is all about, exploring and trying new things. And once you start down a path, if that's not the path you want to be on, you can make a switch. Um, so I would say, you know, reach out to any of, there are a lot of people here who are really invested in your success. Um, you know, I'm going to look much better as a staff member if you're successful on the back end leaving here. And so I want to help you. So as does the advising staff and all of us. So take advantage of that. I was a student at Penn State in liberal arts many, many years ago, and not even a fraction of the resources that exist today were here. And, um, you know, I want, I want students to, to really kind of tap into that. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's such a good point. Uh, in, in a former life, I, I worked in the admissions office here and had, had conversations a lot with, with new and incoming students. And yeah, it's not like high school where you have to just stick to the thing that you do because that's what you do. You can really try something completely different or try on multiple different things or yeah, just learn about things you didn't even uh, know existed. So, um, Kathy, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Um, there's also a a question that came in about, is there a deadline to sign up for clubs and organizations? I know that probably differs from org to org, but um, if there's anything you can, can say about that. Yeah, I would say it might depend. It probably depends on the organization if they have some sort of application process, but a lot of the orgs are just open to, to all students and you can come and go uh, as you want. So if you didn't sign up this week, that's totally fine. You can still reach out to student orgs throughout the rest of the semester. You can try some out and then figure out which ones you, you really like, so, yeah. Great. Um, if anybody has any uh, questions remaining, can put them in the, in the Q&A box. We have about uh, 10 minutes left. Um, Dean Lang, we'll, we'll go back to you. Um, where do you see Penn State and the, the College of the Liberal Arts in 10 years? I was about to start talking without unmuting, so I'm getting better at, at avoiding that. Uh, you know, big, big question. Uh, I would love to see um, our college continue to uh, develop uh, its profile in um, what we'll call the digital uh, liberal arts, um, really advancing um, our profile there uh, in terms of uh, making sure that our students have digital fluency also improving the digital fluency uh, of our faculty um, as well with regard to research and with regard to, to teaching. Um, I would like to see our um, uh, world campus students uh, who are enrolled online uh, in the university. This is one of the things that attracted me that, that they feel 
um, not just feel, but that they are very much a part um, of, of, our, of our college community. Um, I'd, I'd like to see us, uh, and this may or may not be of interest to our students, but think about the kinds of ways that we have ongoing faculty and staff development. So we don't just recruit the stellar faculty, the high quality staff um, who do the work that, that make for a good experience for our students, but that we are giving them opportunities on an ongoing basis to develop themselves. Um, and of course the risk is that they leave you, but that's a, that's a, that's a, a, a good risk to, uh, um, to have if people go off and, and do other good things in the world, which speaks back to this point of how we create an environment where everyone feels that they matter. And I know that that can sound squishy, um, but, I, but I think that organizations are stronger um, when people feel like the institution or the unit, um, as much as it can, cares for them. Um, and so I think we need to, to infuse that kind of spirit uh, certainly in the, the relations among our faculty and staff, but that, of course, has to translate to how we deal, um, you know, deal, deal with our students. Um, I, I'll say one last thing. Um, really interested in thinking about how we augment uh, the resources, not just of our career enrichment network, but also our advising team. And I'm not pandering to them because they're here. This is, this is all true, right? So that... Um, we're able to give the granular, certainly if we think about advising, the granular kinds of support that our, our, students, uh, our students need so that they can do our advising staff an even better job. Um, they're among the teams of folks who work very hard for you all. Make sure that you, you reach out to them as you, as you need them. And you know, we'd like to see them uh, to, do, um, uh, to have all the capacities and resources that they need to serve students who have different kinds of needs, right? Um, uh, that, that emerge over the course of a semester. So that's, that's, not, that's not grand, um, but these are some very concrete kinds of things that I'm, I'm thinking about. I was in a meeting with someone earlier who said that strategy, you can do that in 45 minutes. I don't know if I agree with him, but he said, but, but culture, um, that's really the key thing. And this is someone who was for many years the CEO of a major corporation. <laughs> So I, I, you know, so I'm listening to him, right? And he says this issue about what's the kind of culture that you want to create. And so those are the kinds of things that I'm really interested in, in concretizing in mm -hmm. our college as we move forward and getting grant money for our faculty to do their research as well, because these things cost money, so. Yeah, indeed. And uh, to that point about culture, can you talk a little bit about your commitment to diversity and inclusion and how you are putting that commitment into practice in the college? So, you know, there, there are, are, are many things that, that, you know, we're doing at, um, you know, for faculty and staff that may or may not be of direct relevance um, to, to our students, but, but that matter. I, I will restrict my comment to, uh, to students. Um, I'm really interested in how we're making sure that the good things that our college offers, we're able to publicize it broadly enough um, so that everything from our paternal fellows program to our Chaikin scholars, um, to the students who um, are getting access to um, internships and various kinds of opportunities, um, that we make sure that those constituencies and recipients are reflective of the college, certainly as a very diverse space, right? But also of the university um, the university more, more generally. I'm really interested um, in our departments. Um, so this has nothing to do with anyone here, but making sure that as we think about what academic excellence looks like and how we present that in the college, that is also representative of the broad swath of, of, of the students who come, um, who come into uh, to, to, to our orbit. And for me, um, doing the work of equity and inclusion, you know, I try not to think about it as a thing in and of itself. It has to live somewhere, right? But, but I also want to think about it as something that, because um, I don't get it right um, all the time, right? But, but something that infuses the daily mundane things that we do in terms of how we advise our students, how our faculty um, identify academic excellence in the classroom and cultivate that among folks who maybe uh, historically have not been seen as having those capabilities. 
um, and, and how we represent that in the, in the, um, the naming of our student marshals, our, our college marshal, uh, things along those lines. Um, so again, not, not uh, major grand uh, uh, things, but, um, but I, I think finding ways to get our arms around all of the, the individuals who come into our bailiwick as a college in these really daily routine kinds of ways. Yeah. Great. Uh, before we uh, bring things to a close here, I have, I have um, one more question for you. I'm saving for the ending line, but um, Kathy, do you wanna tell us about the, the first year lecture coming up and, and what students can, can expect from that event? Yeah, so next Wednesday, September 2nd at 3.30 p.m. will be the first year lecture. Uh, Jill Wood, she's a professor in women's gender and sexuality studies, will be giving that lecture for, for first year students. So the, the details and the registration link are in the class of 2024 Canvas course. So you can find the link and make sure you're registered there. You can also submit questions ahead of time. And like this event, afterwards, there will be a a discussion in the Canvas course and uh, Jill Wood will be joining the discussion and answering any follow-up questions you have from, from that event. Okay. And uh, is the lecture mandatory? Someone just asked. Uh, if you have class during that time, you, you don't have to attend. Uh, we will be recording the, the lecture and putting it in the Canvas uh, page afterwards for you to watch. But we are asking that first year students do attend. It's a great opportunity uh, to hear more about the college and, and the liberal arts experience. And we also want you to be able to participate in the discussions that'll be happening afterwards in the campus space. Right. And, and, and uh, can, I, can I add also that, that Jill Wood is an award-winning um, instructor. And so, um, you know, She's, she's, she's pretty popular. I think she's pretty awesome. I, th I think you would enjoy yeah. it as well. Sorry. Yeah, it, she won the university's top teaching award last year. So, I mean, she's a treat. It, it, it will be a very, it will be worth your time, believe me. Great. And then uh, today's event will also be posted in that same Canvas group, right? Okay, perfect. So if you missed anything or, or want to, to go back to catch any of those resources, you can certainly do that in that class of 2024 Canvas space. Uh, Dean Lang, um, we'll, we'll give you the last word and I, I saved the best question for last. Um, someone wants to know if you have any pets. So tell us about your pets and then any final thoughts uh, you would like to, to leave us with today. Oh, oh, you're muted, Dean Lang. <laughs> so I knew that was gonna happen, knew it was gonna happen. So uh, I will say I live in a household with three pets. Sometimes they're my pets. Um, so, uh, we have a cat, her name is Pixie, um, uh, a Chihuahua, uh, her name is, uh, her name is Paris, and we've got a Corgi, um, and her name is Hestia. Um, our daughter named all of them. Um, Hestia has a meaning. Um, I should know it, I, I don't remember, but I, I think it's, it's, it's some reference to Greek goddess of the hearth or something like that. Um, so, uh, so, so yes, I, I live with dogs as well as people and, um, and I enjoy them mostly. Great. Thank you. Actually, I, I, I like, I like my pets, but, but, <laughs> but you know, this, this whole environment has created a situation where pets are acting strangely, um, mm. you, you know, and, and, and it's, it's been interesting to, to kind of work that out. I'm sorry. You shouldn't. No, it's all. I was just going to ask if you had any final thoughts uh, you, you'd like to leave us with today? I, I would just say, I, I hope that this was, a, was useful for you all. Obviously we would have preferred this in person and someday soon we will do that again. Um, I just want, I hope that your week has gone well. And if it's not been the perfect week, um, that happens even in normal circumstances. So don't sweat that too much. Um, if, if you are having problems to the point that's been made, do not do this by yourself reach out to us. And even if you think you're reaching out to the wrong person, uh, you will tend to get to the right place that you need to. Someone will send it to where it needs to go. And I just want you all to, to, to know that, that we're, we're thinking about you um, and we're thinking about ways to, to make sure that you have um, a quality Penn State experience 
under these very unfortunate circumstances. My thanks to, to Greg, to, 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 to Richard, Dean Page, to, to Susan Nell, Kathy, uh, Jenna, thank you, Kevin, um, who's in the background, and Bill Hessert as well, all of you folks for, for joining this and, um, and for doing the work behind the scenes and on the stage to make this happen. And uh, you students have a very good weekend. You take good care of yourselves and each other. Wonderful, thank you very much. You can check the screen for, for some of the, the resources. And again, check the class of 2024 space in Canvas for the recording of this event as well. Thank you all so much.